there were a news story that involved someone related to me or a member of the staff of the show or a close friend of mine or my dog, now, if something were to happen to anyone in any one of those categories, I would have to disclose that relationship to you before reporting on the story. In fact, there's a chance that I wouldn't report on the story at all. After some reflection, along with my colleagues and my bosses, we may decide that I have an unfair conflict of interest that would prevent me from doing that part of my job impartially. I would step aside. I would recuse myself and leave it to somebody else at MSNBC to report on the story instead of me if I had a personal link to it. That, that's the way that it works in the news business, even in the cable news business. That's the way it works in a lot of businesses, especially that is the way it works in the legal profession. At least that's how it's supposed to work. Last night, we brought you breaking news involving serious questions about the impartiality of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, questions about whether Justice Thomas should have recused himself from the Citizens United case because of a political strategy event in which he seems to have participated, an event paid for and sponsored by some of the corporate leaders who stood to benefit directly from the court's decision in that case. It's a story that has been percolating for quite some time. When the New York Times first reported last month that both Justice Thomas and Justice Antonin Scalia had participated in some of those political strategy events, a spokesman for the court said Justice Thomas had just made a brief drop by at a weekend event in Palm Springs. He just stopped by. Nothing to see here. Keep moving. But when the folks at the advocacy group Common Cause looked at Justice Thomas's financial disclosure form for 2008, they discovered that for that weekend in question, he had been reimbursed for four days of transportation, meals, and accommodations by the Federalist Society. It is a group that is funded in part by the billionaire Koch brothers. Four days seems like a lot more than a brief drop by, which raises questions about the Supreme Court and whether its justices are tolerating the perception of or an actual conflict of interest by justices on the court. Here's why this is such a mess for the court and a mess for us as a country. Charles Koch, conservative activist, billionaire, corporate bigwig, bragged in the program for one of his political strategy events that Justice Scalia had been a previous participant. Lo and behold, on Justice Scalia's 08 financial disclosure forms, he revealed that he was reimbursed by the Federalist Society, this group tied to the Koch brothers, reimbursed for food, lodging, and transportation expenses associated with him giving four speeches that year and for the lectures, plural, that he gave the following year in 2009. That means at least six times that we know of in the two years before the Citizens United decision was handed down, Justice Scalia hobnobbed with and received payment from some of the corporate leaders in whose favor he would be handing down a very controversial decision in a matter of months. The Citizens United decision, as you know, cleared the way for corporations to engage in all the direct political spending they want with as little public disclosure as they want. In the last election, a political advocacy group funded by the Koch brothers, that's called Americans for Prosperity, ran more than $1.1 million in ads about energy policy. Koch Industries, the multi-billion dollar conglomerate the brothers own and run, Koch Industries lobbies heavily for reduced energy and environmental regulation. That's an obvious benefit for their bottom line. Americans for Prosperity has reported spending a total of $1.3 million on independent campaigning before the election, with 96% of that money benefiting Republican candidates. That's the spending that we know about. That's what's been disclosed. Because Republicans won a majority in the House in the last election, the House Energy Committee, like all committees in the House, is now Republican-controlled, and most of the Republicans on that Energy Committee signed a pledge given to them by... Americans for Prosperity saying they would oppose the Obama administration's plans to regulate greenhouse gases. They also say they have plans to restrict the reach of the EPA, which of course has oversight of Koch Industries. All in all, all that political spending looks to have been a pretty good investment for the Koch brothers. After it became known that Justices Scalia and Thomas attended Koch Brothers events before they ruled on the Citizens United case, which has been so spectacularly good to the Koch Brothers, uh, the watchdog group Common Cause wrote a letter to the Attorney General asking him to investigate, saying, quote, if Justices Thomas and Scalia attended or spoke at Koch Industries a meeting, at a Koch Industries meeting during that time frame, it would certainly raise serious issues of the appearance of impropriety and bias. Justice Thomas, for five years, just stopped disclosing that his wife had any income at all. In that five-year time period, she was paid over $600,000 by conservative advocacy organizations. When called on it, Justice Thomas corrected the filings after the fact. The Supreme Court said that Justice Thomas just dropped in on a conservative political strategy meeting convened by a party that benefited from one of his later rulings. His financial disclosure forms make it seem like a heck of a lot more than a drop-in. They at least make it seem like it was a drop-in that lasted for four days. The Supreme Court as an institution has very few rules that govern it. 
because they are expected to have good judgment enough to not need them. Our whole system of having a Supreme Court that cannot be appealed at the pinnacle of our judiciary depends on us as Americans believing in the integrity of that court. What do we do if the court just decides they don't care if they're seen as biased? Joining us now is Bob Edgar. He's the president and CEO of Common Cause, which has petitioned the Supreme Court for an explanation and the Justice Department for an investigation of these matters. Mr. Edgar, thank you for your time. It's great to be with you, Rachel. Um, first of all, this is a, this is a um, relatively simple story, but with some complicated details. Did I get anything wrong in the way I laid it out? You laid it out perfectly. And when I was in elementary school, I learned about the Supreme Court, and I had always assumed that the nine members of the Supreme Court would be ethical, uh, even though they held different political views, they would look at issues in terms of the impact on the Constitution and on average ordinary citizens. But over the last couple weeks and years, a number of the Supreme Court justices have just violated their conflict of ethics rules, uh, their conflict of interest rules, and um, all other federal judges have a code of ethics that they abide by. The Supreme Court has been left out of those rules and you would assume that they wouldn't need them as you said in in your opening but you know i think there's an arrogance in the supreme court right now uh, when foreign diplomats have diplomatic immunity they're not tried i think the nine members of the supreme court at least a few of them uh, scalia and thomas being particular uh, have a they, they have an ethical immunity mm. that they think uh, the American public won't see what they've done. And Common Cause has decided to call them out, to shine some light on it, to ask the Attorney General to specifically look at here are these two judges who go in 07 and 08 to a very secretive meeting of the Koch brothers. They come back to the Supreme Court in 09. They do an extraordinary thing. They hold off the Citizens United versus the FEC for a whole new term. They come back in September. Normally the Supreme Court doesn't come back until October. They come back in September and have an extraordinary session. And then a year ago when they come out with their decision, a five to four decision, when they come out with that decision, they take a very narrow issue and they broaden it. And they give corporations and labor unions the ability to dip into their corporate treasury. Uh, Justice Thomas's wife sets up something called uh, Liberty Central and automatically benefits from what has been provided. Benefited how? Uh, she benefited by taking corporate money for the first time in our history where uh, corporations that were surrounding conservative political ideologies were now able to use that money in independent expenditures. The Koch brothers, for example, would give legal contributions to a candidate maybe three or four or five thousand dollars and then spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to trash their opponents in independent expenditures. Common Cause believes that it's time for the nine members of the Supreme Court to disclose their conflicts of interest, to have openness and transparency. We think the uh, Judiciary Committee of the House and Senate ought to investigate. We think the Attorney General ought to figure out whether there is a real conflict of interest. And by accident, uh, we discovered uh, Justice Thomas not filling out a very simple form. And he surprised all of us when he said it was just too complicated when it was simply a box to check. The thing that was upsetting about that is that he had previously disclosed all of his wife income, wife's income and then just stopped for five years until you guys called him on it. Um, the Supreme Court is a, an institution that uh, by definition, is not overseen by anybody, but um, Common Cause, you are making the first stab at that. Um, thanks for your attention to this. Will you keep us surprised about the responses that you get? We're going to stay on top of it. Uh, we'll let you know what the Attorney General says, and we'll also keep the pressure on, because there are a lot of issues like health care. There are environmental issues that are going to come before the court over the next year, and it's really, really important that we have the, the real sense as Americans, whether we're conservative, moderate, or liberal, that these judgments are being made in the best interest of our nation and not in the best interest of corporations. Bob Edgar, President and CEO of Common Cause. Thanks very much for your time today, Bob. Good Appreciate to be with it. you, Rachel.